Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com and this is part 11 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we are going to talk about understanding builds in Team Foundation Server 2015. So before watching this part I would request you to watch the whole Team Foundation Server 2015 video series which is nothing but the first 10 part of that particular video series since this part will actually be working from the foundation of those 10 parts. All right, so let's get started. Well, does Team Foundation Server has CI capabilities? Well, what is CI? Of course, CI is nothing but the continuous integration systems. And the continuous integration system is something which is available in many different software in current in market today where you have something like Jenkins, a Team City, or even you can use Maven for that matter. Well, does Team Foundation Server has CA capabilities? Well, of course, yes. TFS has build automation starting with its first release in 2006 and gained CI feature in 2008. In 2010, Microsoft brought significant capabilities based on Windows Workflow Foundation and Visual Studio editing experience. So what else can we do with this CI? Well, using Team Foundation Server 2015, one can build their product or projects and can also do a lots and lots of stuff with this Team Foundation Server build capabilities. They can do something like synchronizing the source code whatever they are writing in multiple different projects in various different project collections and team projects they can synchronize all the codes they can compile the whole application itself and they can run the associated unit test for those applications so if you have multiple different unit test cases written in any kind of framework it can be a ms test or it can be a n unit or whatever you want to those kind of unit tests will also be supported by your team foundation server build systems so you can run that associated unit test for those application and also you can perform code analysis for your source code so that you can see how your source is performing based on a particular time and you can perform code coverage so you can see how the unit test has been written and whether this particular unit test is also covering the whole code without leaving any one of the branches of the particular test cases so it is pretty important that you do code coverage for your application and that's available out of the box in team foundation server build system so you can do that as well and then you can also release the builds on the file server. So you can deploy the application's build in any one of the shared file server or within the server itself if you want to. And so that the team can take this particular build and they can start doing installation of their build in their machines or your continuous integration system also has capability to deploy the build at the same time perform the installations if you have written some kind of PowerShell scripts. Well, we'll talk about them in upcoming videos of this particular video series, but this is how you can do the release build on the file server. And you can also publish the build report. So whatever you have built, what is the build log and all the build reports, you can publish that with the build system of Team Foundation Server. And with Team Foundation Server 2015's new feature, one can also perform build for cross platforms like iOS or Android and Linux and all those operating systems are supported by Team Foundation Server 2015. Team Foundation Server 2015 also introduced auditing of build definitions, meaning until Team Foundation Server 2013, if you have a build definitions and if somebody edit that particular build, def build definitions and if they try to run that and if there happens any failure, you will not have any auditing of the build definitions changes because those build definitions will not have any kind of versioning systems and there won't be any kind of auditing of who make made the changes of the, those build definitions and all those th stuffs. Whereas in 2015, you have a complete auditing of the build definition out of the box. 
So this is one of the cool feature, most requested feature in Team Foundation Server, and it's there right now in 2015. All right, so what are the different types of builds available in Team Foundation Server? So till Team Foundation Server 2013, meaning TFS 2010, 2012, and 2013, it has only one kind of build definitions or the build definitions why I'm saying suddenly the build definition here we'll talk about the build definition in upcoming videos of this video series but just stay informed that there is something called build definitions which is actually a kind of procedure of how you can uh, build your application but as of now just uh, but just keep this in mind that there are some types of build definition available. Till 2013, there is a kind of build definition available and that build definition is called as XAML build. So XAML build was the one which was there till 2013 and starting from Team Foundation Server 2015, Microsoft introduced a new way of building application by supporting multiple platforms like Windows, iOS, Android, and it even supports languages like Java. Or by also with Java, you can support Ant, Maven, or Gradle, as I already told, and also it supports Linux. So this kind of build definition is called as Vnext. So we'll discuss about XAML build definitions and Vnext build de definitions in upcoming videos of this video series. But as of now. Just keep informed that these are the two types of build definitions available in Team Foundation Server 2015. So is build supported in Visual Studio Online? Well, of course, Visual Studio Online is one of the online version of Visual Studio Team Foundation Server where you can deploy the codes uh, of your project. Well, is the build supported in VSO? Of course, yes. Visual Studio Online also supports building of your application on the cloud, as you can see here in the diagram. So do we need to install anything other than Team Foundation Server in our machines to perform the build operations? Yep. Team Foundation Server 2015 requires some prerequisite software to be installed in our machine or machines to perform build operations. And they are, for XAML build, we need to have something called a build controller and a build agent. So this build agent can be any number of build agents and build controller uh, can be one or two depends upon what load you have. But you can associate a build controller to only one collection. Meaning if you have a default collection then you can associate the default collection with one controller and this controller will also have a multiple different agents and these agents should be registered with that particular build controller meaning if you register a build agent let's say build agent 1 uh, with this particular build controller then that particular agent 1 is always a servant for that particular controller so he cannot be delegated to do some other work with for some other controllers which is not possible so it is kind of strict rules here so uh, that's how in XAML uh, world it works so this is how you can do I mean if you have a build controllers you will have set of build agents and that agent can be in a local machine or in a remote machines uh, and that has to be registered only with uh, one controller. So you cannot uh, use that same agent, uh, which is already registered with some other controller and to perform some operation, of course, it cannot be done. So that is for the XAML environment. And for the VNext, you will have something called agent pools, meaning uh, you will have multiple different agents. You can create them. And there will be one which is a default agent uh, pool, which is there available out of the box with Visual Studio Team Foundation Server 2015. Uh, but uh, you can also create uh, multiple different agent pools. But here, uh, there is nothing called a controller uh, kind of concepts. It will automatically register with the Team Foundation Server using orchestric way but uh, that's taken care of automatically by team foundation server 2015 and the good news is uh, there is no uh, servant 
client kind of stuff here because your agent is free to be used by any kind of bills uh, if it want to so uh, the bill definition will automatically uh, pick up any available agents and it will uh, try to use that particular agent to perform the build operation so uh, that's the greatest leverage you have in vnext build all right so let's see them in action in next video so that stay tuned till then uh, we can see more about all of them we discussed in these slides so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day